Hello everybody, it's the Film Optimist, and today I'm talking about Looper. Holy shit. The movie takes place in Kansas City, Kansas, set in the year 2044. Time travel hasn't been invented yet, and in 30 years it will be. Oh, by the way, it's illegal, so, yeah. The future mob hires Loopers, who are hitmen that kill the criminals that exist in the future. How do they do this, you ask? Go watch it and find out yourself. Gee, what a fucking terrible end to that review. It was doing so well, too, and it was just like, I just fucking phoned it in. That was my way of saying, hey, I don't want to spoil shit, but... I didn't introduce any of the characters or whatever. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. I can't see fucking long to do a review. Yeah, it revolves around present-day time trip killers called Loopers, hired by criminals that exist in the future to terminate victims who want to send back through time. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. In 2044, 25-year-old Joe works for a Kansas City crime syndicate as an assassin or a looper. Um, Joe, he has, a, he has an actual name. Is it just Joe? Oh, no one has last names. I didn't know that. I forgot about that. Since tracking systems in the future of 2074 have made it nearly impossible to dispose of bodies undetected, the syndicate sends its enemies back in time to be executed. Managed by a man from the future named Abe, loopers kill and dispose of victims whose faces are concealed, recovering silver bars attached to their targets as payment. Tied connected to the syndicate, any loopers who survive until 2074 are sent back and killed by their own younger selves, referred to as closing doors. These targets are identified by gold bars instead of silver, uh, mark, marking the end of the looper's contract. So it's like, you're done. Cool. Now go live your life with all the fucking money you made. You're going to die in 2074. So he'll be 55 when he dies. Uh, Joe's friend Seth confesses to Joe that he has not killed his future self. Old Seth has escaped. After warning Seth that a person in the future called the Rainmaker will overthrow the five major bosses and close all loops. Joe reluctantly hides Seth in his apartment floor safe, but later reveals his location after Abe threatens to confiscate half of Joe's saved silver. Abe's elite Gatman captures Seth, cutting the dress into his arm, and begins severing body parts. Um, these effects appear on old Seth's body. He goes to hide behind the body and then shoots the shotgun. Abe shoots apartment, finding it ransacked by the Gatman. Joe fights with Kid Blue, uh, falls off a fire escape, and blacks out. In another timeline, Joe does kill his older self. He moves to Shanghai and becomes a hitman to finance his drug addiction and wild lifestyle. Eventually, he marries and breaks the addiction with his wife's help. Seven years later, his wife is killed when Joe is taken to close the loop. Overpowering his captors, old Joe sends himself back to 2044, altering his history by evading Joe and escaping. So Joe was always going to close the loop. Old Joe experiences vague memories of Joe's actions in the past, uh, in the present, and meets his younger self at a diner. He wants to alter history again and save his wife by killing the Rainmaker as a child. He acquires a map from a local library using numbers written on his hand that are supposed to pertain to the Rainmaker's identity. Kid Blue and the Gatman. Who is Kid Blue? Noah Segan. Is he? Okay, I'll email that guy. And Paul Dano is Seth. Fuck. I love Paul Dano. Dano? I don't even say his name. I fucking love him. Um... Kid Blue and a gunfight ensues. Both Joes escape with pieces of the map. Joe follows the map to a farm where a woman named Sarah lives with her young son, Sid. Sarah recognizes the numbers on the map as Sid's birthday and the location of the hospital where he was born. Joe guesses that old Joe is going to kill all three children born at the hospital on the same day, not knowing which one would become the Rainmaker. Jesse, a gat man, comes to the farm, but Sid and Joe hide. Later that night, Sarah and Joe have sex, and Sarah reveals that she has above-average telekinetic powers. Sid's powers are even stronger. In the morning, Jake wa wakes to find Jesse holding Sarah at gunpoint. Terrified, Sid tells Jesse, though Sid kills Jesse using telekinesis. It's fucking crazy. Just blows the fuck up. Um, nice. Uh, Joe realizes that Sid will become the Rainmaker and that old Joe will now know this. Kid Blue captures old Joe and takes him to Abe. Old Joe breaks free. Killing Abe and his henchmen, and goes to Sarah's farm, followed by Kid Blue. While young Joe kills Kid Blue, old Joe uh, pursues Sarah and Sid. When Sid's face is grazed by a bullet, 
Sarah calms him before he can react and kill anyone. She sends Sid into a cane field and positions herself to block Old Joe's line of fire. Joe realizes that Sid will become the Rainmaker if Old Joe kills Sarah. He commits suicide, erasing Old Joe's Old Joe's uh, existence, saving Sarah, and potentially preventing Sid from becoming the Rainmaker. I love this film. Written and directed by Ryan Johnson. Originally conceived as a short film starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt shortly after making Brick, Johnson's first feature. Um, after Johnson released the Brothers Bloom, blah, 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 Bruce Willis is also cast. So Bruce Willis is the old Joe. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is young Joe. Um, they created prosthetics so he would physically resemble Willis. I think they did a tremendous job with that. Um, he doesn't look like fucking diehard Bruce Willis, but who gives a shit? He looks, he looks fucking good. That's all I'm going to say about that shit. I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt, anything that he does. I think Ryan Johnson really nailed it with this one. Um, it feels a lot like like a fucking Nolan film, almost. Like, it could fit in the Nolan-verse of his films. Um, I genuinely, genuinely loved it. And I thought the guns they use are these fucking weird-ass, like, little tube-looking things. Um, he has the tube in his arms, and he's thinking, remember, he's walking towards him, and he's actually narrating his head, the kid leaves, he's like, I can already see it now, the kid going on a train, motherless, his mother's been killed, he can just, he, he's gonna become the rainmaker, he's gonna kill everybody, he's gonna use those powers for evil, because of this man that killed his mom, and that's, if I can change it right now, it just, bah, just fucking ends it, and like, Bruce just goes down, and like on his knees and just disappears. And it's like, oh my god. Just a fucking hole. In, a huge hole in his fucking like. He puts it down right here. I think. And it's like just a hole there. Um. Yeah, I love this one. I saw it in theaters. With. Another movie. Can't find the fucking thing. Here it is. Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 Technical difficulties, everybody. I need to wear a jump cut when I come in here and use this. There it is. What the fuck it's up there for? I guess I saw this with Pitch Perfect. Looper was fucking dope. Looper was cool as shit. But I thought I could have sworn I could have sworn I saw this with just my my mom. I remember seeing Pitch Perfect and my brother was there too, I thought. Um so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on Looper. Really, really great film. Wouldn't call it underrated. Most people that I talk to love that film. Um of course there's the one out of five people that are like, Oh it's fucking Shane you're like you're stupid as fuck for thinking that. Like that's dumb. You're dumb and you should feel dumb. But there we go. That's that's a looper. Watch it if you haven't. I know I spoiled the whole damn thing. I should have said spoiler alert. I'll put it in the description or whatever. Spoiler alert. Don't fucking. Okay. Bye. Have a good one.